we know what the word conversion therapy, what those two words drum up in the mind of the average individual. That's, you know, someone sitting down and being shocked or, you know, tortured in order to um, have their perspective changed. That is not what this bill covers. This bill covers everything from two friends sitting together and one guy saying, I want to go have an affair on my wife. And the other friend saying, no, I think you should stop. And then the guy, the other guy saying, but, but I want to do it with another guy and you can't tell me to stop. Oh, okay. In that case, I can't say anything because it would, um, it would, uh, cause you to slow down your homosexual behavior. Um, this bill is so overarching and, and so the, the scope is so broad. I know you've talked to um, um, Andre Shooten about these things and other lawyers. Uh, man, there's some really good legal minds that are very concerned about this. Yeah. If you agree that Bill C-4 silences, marginalizes, and ultimately alienates so many Canadians and has no place on the law books in this country, go to banbillc4.com. Warning. Censorship. Adam Sosier for Rebel News with an update on her ban Bill C4.com campaign. For those unfamiliar with Bill C4, it was branded as a conversion therapy ban and passed through Parliament and Senate unanimously. It has some extremely troubling language and definitions in it, though. It is simply bad law. It is so vague and ambiguous as to make referring one of your friends who might be experiencing same-sex attraction to a pastor at their request may technically be illegal in this country. Pastors, imams, rabbis, anyone who dare speaks out against this and speaks in defense of traditional sexuality, well, they could be breaking the law too. But pastors are not taking this laying down. And to keep me posted with an update on what is going to be coming up for some pastors across the United States and Canada is Michael Thiessen. He's the co-founder and president of the Liberty Coalition of Canada. Liberty Coalition Canada is at a crossroads. We could continue as is, just scrambling to meet each new obstacle. Or, with your help, we could build a robust machine that fights for liberty in this country. We want to inform Canadians of the truth. We want to empower volunteers to get active in their communities in order to push back from all of these infringements on our rights. And we want to steward finances in order to build a staff to support all of these initiatives. We at Liberty Coalition Canada are partnering with pastors all across the country and um, in a wonderful development, we've had American pastors decide to join us, individuals uh, such as John MacArthur and some other prominent pastoral names down south of the border to join us. And, and we literally have a page on our website called Bill C4, How Should the Church Respond? And we want to be on top of this. We want to certainly make sure the government is aware that they have completely overstepped. And in fact, by, by issuing in a bill where the preamble calls um, the ability to look at one's anatomy and understand your sex based upon your anatomy as myth and stereotype um, and to refer to um, all of the worldviews out there that would declare um, marriage to be between one man and one woman, God created them male and female and to come together in a union um, which is marriage and to have children to call that as again, myth and stereotype, we think is outrageous. It is immoral. Uh, it's, it's blasphemous uh, to us Christians, to, to God himself. And we want to make sure that our government understands we're, we're not going to just accept this drastic change of worldview, this, this, this drastic radical ideology that is not based in anything we can observe in uh, family norms or biological norms, uh, we, we, we want to make sure that we're making a statement. So we're preaching. We're January 16th. We are all taking the time in our pulpits to do something that we would normally do, which is teach about a, a, an important subject, but doing it in the context that we are knowingly pushing back on this particular bill. 
And from what I'm hearing, there's almost 2,000 churches in the United States and then almost 200 churches in Calgary or in Canada, rather, um, that are participating in this uh, Biblical Sexuality Sermon Sunday. Yeah, actually, we just had an update yesterday. We are over 3,000 churches in the United States. And here in Canada, we decided not to track people, but just to motivate people. Mm-hmm. So we've, we've talked upwards to oh, 200 churches that are uh, going to join us. And, and we're excited about that. And I, 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 think it's, I think it's actually more than that now that word is getting out. And just to that massive response from the United States, we've seen lots of stories um, with, with whether it be lockdowns or pastor arrests or now this attack on any sort of traditional worldview. Um, Americans are very much viewing this as sort of a canary in a coal mine that this is what's coming if we don't do something now. Is that right? Yeah, I think that you've got a number of Americans and Canadians who have been saying COVID was the canary in the coal mine. Uh, the, 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 the government's response to COVID-19, which has been so over the top, we've been saying, wait a minute, that is signifying something. And now we're seeing it signify something even more, that, that the government is willing to reach right into your family. They're, they're, they're willing to potentially prosecute parents, potentially prosecute teachers, potentially prosecute counselors. Um, of course, we know what the word conversion therapy, what those two words drum up in the mind of the average individual. That's, you know, someone sitting down and being shocked or, you know, tortured in order to um, have their perspective changed. That is not what this bill covers. This bill covers everything from two friends sitting together and one guy saying, I want to go have an affair on my wife. And the other friend saying, no, I think you should stop. And then the guy, the other guy saying, but but I want to do it with another guy and you can't tell me to stop. Oh, okay. In that case, I can't say anything because it would, um, it would uh, cause you to slow down your homosexual behavior. Um, This bill is so overarching and, and so the the scope is so broad. I know you've talked to um, um, Andre Shooten about these things and other lawyers, Uh, man, there's some really good legal minds that are very concerned about this. Well, and like I, I've mentioned before, I, I spoke to lawyers and I was telling them about this and they didn't quite believe me until they read it for themselves. Now, there is some openness to interpretation. Um, one lawyer suggested that this was just horribly worded, ultra ambiguous virtue signaling um, that, that he hoped certainly that it would never be enforced. But my sort of response to that is we already had bans on the gen- on the conversion therapy you and I would be opposed to, I think anyone being forced into anything um, is wrong. And I think you're, you're, you're probably an advocate for that perspective as well. What's troubling here though, is this actually forces people in the other direction. Let's say someone grew up Christian or grew up Muslim um, and they're starting to have some questions. Maybe they're experiencing same-sex attraction. Maybe they're questioning their gender. And they're like, I wanna talk to sort of a progressive LGBTQ advocate and get their perspective of, on what I'm going through. But I'd also like to speak to my childhood imam or a childhood pastor or a rabbi. Um, That rabbi, pastor, imam, technically per the letter of the law, as ambiguous as it is, could be in trouble for just saying, well, this is what we believe and this is the faith you grew up in and this is why uh, you should accept your uh, biological gender. Uh, We're still, if a friend refers you or says, oh, maybe your your parents says, maybe you should go talk to our... uh, to father so-and-so down at the church. Um, That too could be considered a crime in Canada now. This is absolutely shocking stuff. And for people out there who don't really comprehend that or can't understand how it's law, I'm with you. I don't understand either. Check out the Andre Shooten interview. Uh, We'll have a link somewhere for sure um, so that you can see the sort of legal breakdown for yourself. It's troubling. But this Sunday coming up, thousands of pastors will be speaking on these issues. How shocking is it to you that simply teaching theology of the body, human sexuality, any of those types of things that the church has taught on for millennia is suddenly illegal in Canada? I'm primarily concerned about the individuals outside of the the four walls of the institutional church. I am very concerned for counselors, I am very concerned for doctors. I am very concerned for teachers. 
I am very concerned for business owners. I am concerned for individuals who are out in the real world. I, I, I wonder if the government is going to have the stones to go further than these ridiculous overnight incarcerations that they're doing of pastors for COVID-19 and really attempt to criminally charge a pastor in this country for teaching that you should love your body. You, you should look at your body and affirm what God has given you. And then secondly, that you should enter in to a heterosexual relationship in order to protect marriage and to have children. If, if the government is willing to go that far and to prosecute a pastor for saying that from the pulpit, based upon scripture, you and I both know that freedom of religion and conscience is dead in this country. Now, I, I want to say it's, it's almost dead because of the bill itself and the fact that it received unanimous consent and that the conservatives were the ones who tabled it. But I am primarily concerned in people who don't have that institutional protection of the church, where they're just out in the real world asking for someone asking for advice, they're giving it, and then somebody reports that. Because you and I both know that this is most likely going to be in the same way that COVID-19 surveillance and COVID-19 um, uh, oppression has come at a complaint-driven society. You know, there are going to be some people who are queued up and made examples of, and I, I doubt that that's going to be pastors, but we pastors want to make sure that we are out of the gates saying we are not standing for this. And if you're going to attack our sheep, then you better come get us first. Well, and as should be the case in any civilized society, people should be free to share their ideas, espouse their values, have those conversations and dialogue. Sadly, with Bill C-4, those opportunities for conversation uh, simply further dividing society, despite the unanimous assent of politicians who didn't seem to care how troubling this bill was for quite possibly the majority of Canadians. Um, I want to thank you so much for this update. Um, and we're going to certainly follow and uh, stay posted with on, on Sunday to see what happens. Hopefully, Christians, or Christians, Muslims, Jews, whoever, are left simply to preach in peace um, and to share the word of their faiths without the government uh, arresting anybody or persecuting anybody. Again, thanks so much for the update. Really appreciate it. For everyone out there, thanks so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Well, Bill C-4 may be the law of the land in Canada. That doesn't mean we're going to take it lying down either. These pastors and many others are sharing their stories and taking a brave stance. That's a good thing. Canada is a country founded on conversations and the sharing of ideas, not one-sided, politically driven propaganda. If you agree that Bill C-4 silences, marginalizes, and ultimately alienates so many Canadians and has no place on the law books in this country, go to banbillc4.com.